Good night, good night. Yeah, one time tonight, God is good and God is good all the time. My name is Jamie Jazz Praise the Bible. Let me give you a word on tonight and a little short news. First, we're going to talk about um, um, Social Security. They have not cut Social Security yet. You, you know, retirement face, you know, with um, 17000 um, a cut, you know, uh, Social Security isn't saved. You know, so you know they're still trying to find something to cut. And Social Security is on the table. Uh, for 2024 campaign uh, tra- campaign ran up you know facing pressure they're facing pressure you know uh, so security why this place is framed you know as protecting benefits and there is really you know a uh, discernment of 22 percent across the board benefits are cut so when the social security retirement fund become involved with you know, in that retirement, you know, income for couples also, you know, so they have to, they have to make some kind of cuts, you know, and it look like Social Security, you know, is on the table of them trying to cut something. So they are trying to save it, you know, um, we have to look harder on other things to cut, you know, instead of um, Social Security, come in and retirement. You know, they they will have to go back to work. You know, if this happened because of cost of li- living, you know, so it just do happen. Most of them have to go back to work because the cost of living are you know high. So I request that Social Security, you know, do not get cut because they don't work half of their life. You know, or them taking off of Social Security. You know, and they they look forward for that. You know, when they retire. You know, so we're going to try to dig harder in trying to save Social Security. You know, so I do have a word. We're still talking about Paul. You know, now Paul got a, vi- a vision and it's strong. You know, drawing is like uh, like a disease or something that irritates you. You know, so Second Chronicles chapter 12, 1 through 10. So I must go on Boston. You know, although there is nothing to be gained, but I will go on to vision and um, revelation from the Lord. You know, so Paul had made it clear that to go to these um, deceivers is not to seduce um, the true Christ, but Paul does not want to complete, you know, with them, you know, and their boasting, boasting, excuse me. Now he would do so. You know, in order to keep the um, the Corinthians from being deceived by them, now they have they have false prophets. You know, um, so he really don't want to go or go around them. You know, but he want to go in a way so they won't deceive the Israelite. You know, and these false prophets they more spiritual than um Paul. You know, so I know a man in Christ who fourteen years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether it was in the body or out of the body, I do not know, but God knows. Now, he's telling this story about a man, but really this man is him. He's talking about 14 years ago when he met Jesus on that road when he was going to that city to kill God's people. You know, but um, maybe for either to time and when the apostle first had the knowledge of, you know, or his being in Christ, which was at his conversation that he was he was at oh uh, he was with Christ, you know, from that turn and a being given to him, chosen in him, loved by him, set as, you know, a seal upon his heart, now as well as engraved on the songs, you know, of his hand and represented by him and in him. Now he talking about himself. But he's not letting nobody know he's talking about him. Well, because he don't want to think highly of himself. So he's saying, I'm telling you about a man. But all the while, he's talking about himself when he met Jesus 14 years ago. You know, so and I know that this man, rather in the body or apart from the body, I do not know, but God knows. Now, he started saying he's um, this person saw Jesus, but he apart from the body. You know, so he don't know either part from the, that the body went up or the spirit went up. You know, but he said God knows. You know, so Paul continued his bar- barson, 
you know, by trying about vision and revelation, you know, that he had received from the Lord. You know, now just um, certify his authority in an apostle and a prophet. Now, Paul is saying that he don't know if Christ had went up in his body, you know, or in his spirit. You know, because you know the spirit will come out also, you know, and the spirit probably went up. But he don't know if his whole body went up or just his spirit went up. He said, oh, the third heaven. He said that Paul had saw Jesus after death. But don't know if his body or spirit had went up. But he said, God knows. You know, now he was caught up, you know, to paradise. And he heard impressive, impressive things. Now, things that no one permitted, you know, to tell. You know, because see, when you're in that world, you know, it's, it's, it, it's like, it's, it's so much story that you know. But you cannot tell. So that's what he's saying. He says a whole lot of stuff he know. He said he like caught up in paradise, you know. But he said things that no one permits to tell, you know. So Paul had written, you know, that he was caught up to the third heaven of paradise in a place where God don't dwell that he does not know whether his, it, it happened to him, physical, you know, or some kind of out of body experience, you know. So he convinced that is really happening to him. You know, now he in the vision now. You know, though though in um God know is he said God know exactly how it happened. You know, that's the sign, you know, he know exactly what had happened, you know. So I will verse, you know, about a man like that, but I will not verse about myself. It's about my weakness. You know, he saying he had weak weakness. Now he was preaching in, in Going on his journey, doing so well. Now, all of a sudden, he's talking about weakness. You know, so Paul had told, Paul had told the story. But um, he really was describing himself, you know, about some things as foolish. You know, he called his weakness foolish, you know, to um, reduce the focus on himself. Now, he had described it indirectly as happening, you know, to a man. You know, but this man was, in fact, Paul himself. You know, now he is not being um, just capital, you know, but about his weakness. But Paul insists that the way to be strong as a Christian was to be weak. And he's telling the truth, you know, so that God's power was more fully on display. When you're in a stone, God don't want you strong all the time. When I first started in my strong, I was so strong, you know. But then, you know, like months and years in the past, you know, I started getting weak. And you can pray. It's a reason why he don't give you strength in your stone. Because God wants you to rely on him. You know, he wants you to rely on him. If you're strong, you, you, you figure like you, you don't need God. Oh, I got it. You know, so that's why he said he explaining his weakness. Because in his weakness, he said, God used his power. You know, and when you strong, you feel like you don't you don't need to call God. You know, but when you weak, what you gonna do? We gonna always call out on God. And see, that's what God wants us to do, to rely on him. So he's not gonna allow you to be strong all the time because you will not cry to God. You know, and so God will show his power, you know, in your weakness. You know, so even if I should chose, you know, uh, chose, I would not be a fool because I would be speaking the truth. But I refrain so no one will think more of me than, you know, by what I do or say. Now, Paul is saying, you know, he, he said, even if I should chose, you know, will not be be a fool. Because he said when he speak, he going to speak with sense. You know, he going to be speaking the truth. You know, and he said, and he said the apostle refrained from telling his unique experience. See, he had experience 14 years ago with Jesus. You know, at that time, you cannot say nothing until it's time for your testimony. You know, remember Paul, 
Paul started telling him a little piece of it when I put the pages out the last time of the inner corner that he had with Jesus, you know. Um, and so because the focus should not be on him, but Paul spoke in a third person, you know, so that people would not view him more highly than he should. Now, that's how Jesus was. Jesus was, Jesus was highly favored. Jesus was a highly, you know, a Jew. But he didn't want nobody to think of him highly. And see, this is how Paul is. Paul said, he, he's telling a story about a man. Because she don't want to put all, all the concentration and focus on him. You know, highly than he should. You know, so that the same way Jesus was, you know, Jesus told his disciple, why are you calling me master? You know, and he started washing their feet. And see, Jesus, and I've been like that myself all, all my life. Now, see, Jesus don't want them to, to look at him like he just mighty man. You know, he want everybody to feel like we all on the same page. You know, so Paul, Paul and this high prophet, you know, so he didn't want them, you know, more of them. He didn't want them to look at him more than what he already is. You know, so he took most of the fo focus off of him. You know, and because of these uh, surprising, great revelation there, Therefore, in order to keep me from becoming um, conceived, I was given a torn in my flesh, you know, a message of, of Satan to torment me, you know. So, Satan, Satan put that uh, torment on him, you know, and that torment is like a disease or something that irritates him. You know, and Paul never wanted them to think highly of him, and God wanted Paul to be Christ-like in his humility instead of seeing himself as being above those he served. And that's how Jesus was. He, he didn't want them to feel like he was above them. He wanted he want everyone to feel like we all on the same page. You know, so God had given to Paul a term, you know, what God had showed him was surprising, great revelation, a measurable gift. You know, would have given Paul limited confidence to keep preaching, despite the terrible suffering. You know, so so a lot of time, you had to be in that suffering. You know, because Paul wasn't too much in the suffering when God had given it to him now. You know, and and uh, and, uh, and God saying, you know, why are you in your suffering? You have limited confidence. You know, confidence to keep on preaching. You know, despite of the suffering. And see, that's how God is, you know, in your suffering, in your stone. You know, he don't want you to stop. He wants you to keep on going. You, despite the suffering. See, that's what he told Paul. In spite your suffering, in spite what you have right now, keep on going. You know, so three times, he said, three times I plead. With the Lord to take it away from him. So he prayed three times to God. To take it away. You know. So we don't know. What Paul thought on. Um, in my flesh. Because he does. He he didn't say. You know. But then. Made, uh, it may be disease. Or the eyes. Or chronic. You know. Whatever it is. It kept him from working. It kept him from working. Because it was just, just that bad. You know, so this torrent, you know, was hindering to his ministry. And he prayed for it to be removed. But God refused. Three times Paul had prayed for healing, you know, and did not receive it. Paul is living proof, you know, that holy living and uh, courage, faith, do not ensure instant physical healing. You know, and so all. Uh, so God said no, and he uh, using him as an example, you know, but he said to me, my grace is significant, you know, for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness, you know, so therefore I would burst all the more gladly about my weakness, you know, so that Christ's power 
may rest on it. And see, and that's what it is. And see, God, God left it on there for a reason. And then down the line, God will get his glory and release it. Now, although God did not remove Paul's physical affliction, you know, he promised to demonstrate his power in power. That's what I just said. He wants to demonstrate his power in power. He will remove, but God do things in his own divine time. You know, he demonstrating his power in power. You know, so the fact that God displayed his power through our weakness, you know, should give us courage and hope. You know, and see, that's what it is. That's what God was saying. You know, in spite what you're going through, in spite the pain and stuff, in spite what I, you know, place on you, he said, still have courage, still have hope, because sooner or later I will use you as an example, you know, and, and show my power, you know, show my power and glory on you. And see, and that's what God's saying. So now Jesus' power is, is perfect in our weakness. You know, now we like to um, downplay, you know, our weakness and focus on our strength. You know, so that is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weakness and insult and hardship and prosecution and difficulty for when I am weak. So then I am strong. So you have to be weak first. And then you have to be strong. Because when you are weak, that's when God shows his power. You know, and so determine is something that causes irritation and agony, you know, that he is torn in my in my flesh. Irritated, affliction, pain. So he was in all kind of pain. And he said it was stopping him from uh, stopping his ministry. Because he hardly wasn't, you know, um, doing on, going on tour. He hardly wasn't going to don't need a ministry or none of that. It affect his livelihood. You know, so that's why I had started. When I started out in my stone, I was strong. You know, I was just doing everything. I, I, I was strong. You know, I was strong. But a year passed, I started getting weak. I prayed to God to give me strength. And all of a sudden, I, I was not receiving no strength. You know, he will leave you weak in your stone until he show his power in you. You know, so I prayed for strength, but I did not get it. You know, and sometimes he'll give me a little strength to keep on going. You know, so God want us, you know, to be weak, to depend on him. Long as we strong, we think we got it. You know, just like I was just on the move. I was, I, I was on the gone, you know, because I was strong. You know, but long as you're strong, we got pride. We think we got it. We think we, we did it all. God don't want you to feel like you done did it all. You know, he don't want you to feel like you did it all. Because he wants to do it. It's his stone. You know, you know so uh, he don't want us to do it on our own. We always have to pray and depend on God. You know, only his power will make us effective for him and will help us in our weakness. You know, so Paul was not nearly as spiritual as he claimed to be, you know, because he did not have the same upper, upper spirit, spiritual experience as these false prophets. Now, these were false prophets, and they were more spiritual than Paul, you know, and Paul reversed of his weakness and suffering. You know, so they was they were showing all kind of spiritual gift and everything. And here Paul gonna speak and talk about his weakness. You, you know, and so he he really don't wanna be around them. You know, but he didn't want them to deceive the Israelites, so he went anyway. You know, so that's the story on Paul. Paul uh, vision. He got he got hit with a, a term and so someone was irritating him, you know. Uh, it was terrible and miserable because it's affect his ministry. You know, he prayed to God for strength, and God did not give him strength because God worked better in his weakness. And sometimes when he said no, a lot of time he's he's um showing you, having you for example. You know, having you for example, um, for to use his power. You know, and so a lot of time when you are strong, you will be weak. 
you know, because God wants you alive and depend on him. As long as you're strong, you feel like you got it. You feel like you ain't got to pray to God. You got it. He don't want you to feel that way. He don't want you to feel like you can do it on your own. But we're supposed to rely on God's strength to get stuff done. And we also talk about Social Security. We don't want them to cut Social Security. You know, that's their livelihood. You know, they work so hard, you know, to um to get um this Social Security. And a lot of them retire, you know, that's their only income. You know, and most of them, if they cut the Social Security, a lot of them going to have to go back to work. You know, so um, I'm going to keep on um, praying and fighting that they keep on um, Social Security and see what else that we can cut besides Social Security. So that's all the word and news that I have for you on tonight. Y'all have a blessed and safe night, and i see y'all in the next video.